Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Haunting Reads booth chat for Library Journal's Day of Dialogue. My name is Jess. I am the media coordinator for CamCat Books, and I am so excited to be moderating this panel with all of our very fun Haunted Reads authors. Um, we have Meredith Lyons, for, who is the author of Ghost Tamer. We have J.L. Delosier, who is the author of The Photo Thief and Amber A. Logan, the author of The Secret Garden of Yanagi Inn. Before we fully delve into everything, uh, I just have a couple of little housekeeping notes. So this will be a 30 minute recorded chat. Um, we ask that you please, if you're not one of our authors, keep your mic on mute. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and anything we have time for in the end, I will go through excuse me, I will go through and um, read out those questions for our authors for you. And uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's start with you, Meredith. Why don't you tell us about your book? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, well, my book is about Rayleigh, an aspiring comedian who is the sole survivor of a train wreck, which kills her best friend and awakens her ability to see ghosts one of them who has been following her her entire life, and another one who is now trying to destroy her. So she and her friendly ghost um, have to kind of go through her past and figure out why this evil spirit is attached. And they try use they try using ghost tamer or ghost hunters, and they try a psychic. Um, and it's a fun, wild, wild ride with a lot of humor and um, also a lot of sadness because death. Absolutely. Well, that sounds like a really exciting one already. Um, JL or Jen, what about you? How, why don't you tell us about The Photo Thief? Sure. And you can call me Jen. That's easier. Um, so The Photo Thief has a grieving detective and an epileptic teen who claims she can talk to the dead, uh, i.e. ghosts. Um, and they team up to solve her mother's murder in a series of 80-year-old um, cold cases using nothing but creepy pictures that hang on the mansion's walls. Um, those photographs, those vintage photographs, are um, the ones that Cassie, our epileptic teen, claims she can talk to. So uh, just like Meredith, it's um, it's got a little bit of grief in there. So because death, right? Isn't that what you said, Meredith? <laughs> but um, you can't have a ghost without death, right? So <laughs> kind of goes hand in hand. Well, this is our haunting reads booth chat, so we would expect some haunted elements here, I'm sure. And Amber, tell us about the Secret Garden of Yanagi Inn. Yeah, so the Secret Garden of Yanagi Inn is a retelling of the children's classic story, The Secret Garden, but meant for adults. And it's set in a kind of a creepy Japanese inn. So it's the story of... Um, an American photographer who is given a grant to go photograph the inn in Japan. And when she gets there, she starts hearing weird crying at night and unusual happenings. And she decides that she's going to investigate. And as she investigates, she starts uncovering secrets that seem attached to her own family and her own past. And again, there's grief <laughs> as we were, you know, just talking about um, because it's not just her cousin, like in the original story, it's her cousin who's doing the crying at night. It's a little bit more mysterious. It's a little bit more ghostly, uh, not to give any spoilers, but um, yeah, it is an adult take on The Secret Garden. So, <laughs> Amazing. Well, already I'm excited for all three of your books and to hear more. Um, I think I might just stick to that same order if that is all right with you guys. So um, Meredith, tell us about your protagonist. Rayleigh is one of the favorite, my favorite characters that I've written. Um, she is a snarky badass with a chip on her shoulder at the beginning. She's dealing poorly with the trauma of losing her best friend and is kind of resentful of her new ghost issues. Um, but she kind of gradually comes to rely on and even like her ghost Casper. And I mean, the other ghosts are a different issue, but I really, I feel like she is the kind of, what I would have liked to be when I was younger if I had been a little bit cooler <laughs> and, and more more willing to say what was on my mind all the time. So she's fun to read and she was very fun to write. Amazing. Yeah, she sounds like a lot of fun. What about you, Jen? Tell us about your protagonist. 
Yeah, I actually have dual protagonists. So I have uh, the homicide detective Brennan, um, who lost his mojo along with his daughter, his marriage, and his self-respect. And um, fun fact, I based him on um, uh, Bruce Willis in uh, the Sixth Sense. So um, that character was a psychologist. Crow was his name, Dr. Crow. But uh, every time I hear Brennan speak in my head, I see Bruce Willis from The Sixth Sense. So, um, and then the other protagonist is a teen, the teenager Cassie, who is the daughter of a wealthy socialite and a doctor. And she's been hidden from public view. Um, the wealthy family is embarrassed um, by her seizure disorder, um, and uh, they're also embarrassed by her claims that she can talk to dead people via vintage photographs. That is very, very cool. And Amber, what about your protagonist? Yeah, my protagonist is Mari Lennox. So it's going to play on the Mary Lennox from the original story. And she is, like I said, an American photographer, but she was born and lived in Japan for a number of years as, as a child. And But now she's moved back to the U.S. and she's spent her adult life there. But So when she goes back to Japan, she's encountering a lot of the she didn't have the best time when she was in Japan as a child, we'll, we'll say that. And so she's familiar with it, but it also feels very foreign to her because she has not been back since she was like 10 years old. And she's dealing with a lot of grief because her mother recently passed away. And this trip is kind of her way of getting away from her grief and getting a kind of a, a fresh start. Wow, that sounds so interesting. I'm so curious to know more about all of your guys's I mean, I'm really excited to just get into reading all of them. So it'll be a very, very fun time, I'm sure, for all of us who are really interested in haunting reads in general. Um, so you guys gave us a little bit of a synopsis of your books, but I'm curious about the main conflict. What do you feel like is the hinging point of your story that your story centers around, Meredith? Well, the the big issue is the well i'll say the um surface issue is the fact that this evil ghost is trying to um destroy rayleigh in her soul and she and casper her friendly ghost have to figure out why um why and how to stop him the underlying conflict though is rayleigh dealing with her grief and her past wounds and um, some past issues that she's not even aware of and um, and healing those and coming to um, to accept her new powers and her her past and go forward and make a better future for herself. Wow, I also love that your uh, friendly ghost is named Casper. <laughs> they picked that name because he doesn't know his name. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> And Jen, tell us about your main conflict. Very similar to Meredith. I mean, on the surface, this is a simple murder mystery whodunit. Who killed Cassie's mother, right? That's the simple murder mystery. But, um, you know, Cassie claims it's her father, which leads to some interesting family dynamics. So that's one source of, of conflict there. But on a deeper level, it, it's really about grief and how does it play with your mind? What will it make you believe? Um, you know, we've got this hard boiled homicide detective who's being told that Cassie is talking to the dead. He's getting his clues from this girl who is talking to dead people. So can she really talk to the dead or is she suffering side effects from her medicines? Is it her seizure disorder? Or is she insane like her great grandfather Leland who is the photo thief of the title? So Brennan has to decide you know, who and what to believe to be able to solve the case. And with his grief, he has this desire to talk to his dead daughter again. And so that's not helping his deductive, you know, his his reasoning um, when Cassie's offering him that special gift. So so it's about grief and how it warps its mind and maybe a little bit about self-respect, um, what it takes to lose it and what it takes to regain it. And that applies to both Brennan and Cassie. Mm, I really love that. That sounds like a really powerful message. Um, we have some new people joining us, so I will just quickly recap. We have three authors here with us on our Haunting Reads panel, um, our little booth chat here. We have Meredith Lyons, author of Ghost Tamer, J.L. Delosier, author of The Photo Thief, and Amber A. Logan, author of The Secret Garden of Yanagi Inn, 
and Amber was just going to tell us about the main conflict of her story. Yeah, so in my novel, the, I mean, it is at its heart a mystery, but it's not a mystery in the way that there's, there's no crime, there's no murder. So it's a little bit of a quieter mystery and that it's really Mari who has come to the, the, the Yanagi Inn and she's trying to uncover A, what is this ghostly crying happening in the night? And B, what does it have to do with her? Because as she digs deeper, she's realizing that everything seems to be tied to her past, to her childhood, to her mother who recently passed away. And so on the surface level, she's trying to serve, ser um, solve this mystery. But like the other two authors said, um, the underlying themes are healing from grief, confronting her own past. And similar to the, the original Secret Garden, it really is about healing and uh, yeah, coming to terms with what has happened in one's life and learning how to move forward. Wow, that's very, very cool. So uh, we have gone over just general synopses of each of your books. Um, we've talked about your protagonists, which all sound very, very layered and lovely, and the main conflicts of all of your stories, which seem to center around, you know, some center mystery and also healing and dealing with grief. And I love, Jen, you're, you're talking about self-respect as well. So it's sounds like all of these books hit on some really interesting and important themes for the audience to learn from. Um, tell us about what audience you think your books target, Meredith. Um, I have I've been amazed at the um, range of people who have really connected with this story so far. Um, but especially if you love Chicago because it does take place in Chicago. It is very, very centered um, in, in that city. Um, actors and comedians, um, anyone who's ever been on stage, I think would really connect with Rayleigh. Um, anyone, of course, who loves ghost stories. Um, people who enjoy humor to kind of balance out the emotional punches that the book does have. And witty banter, you, you must love witty banter to get into this book. And I, I feel obligated to say there there is some colorful language. My girl is a she has a potty mouth. So if you don't like the occasional f bomb, you know this may not be the one for you. But um, it's really funny. I had one reader describe it as laughing through tears the entire time. So um, I feel like a lot of people could connect with it. But those are the main 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 folks that I think will really 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 it'll become one of their favorites. Sure. Yeah. I love that laughing through crying. That's very funny. And I can absolutely see how that would be the case for Ghost Tamer. Jen, how about you? What do you, what kind of audience do you think would appeal to your book? Well, first of all, I think Meredith and I should do sort of like a cross book because my book is set in Philadelphia. So you also have the occasional F-bomb, as you can imagine. And I think it would be interesting to take one of our protagonists and move them to the other city. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, but really, uh, same thing, uh, people who love murder mysteries, uh, you know, your Agatha Christie type murder mysteries, but with the, that little ghost story speculative edge. So Shirley Jackson, Riley Sager, Laura Purcell fans will all love this book. I, I Shirley Jackson is one of my heroes. And I, I do have to put a um, shout out to, to lovers of audiobooks because The Photo Thief has been getting a lot of love on audio. It's been nominated for a Thriller Award by the International Thriller Writers for Best Audiobook of the Year. Um, it's had a couple other audiophile magazine has, has given it a shout out. So the narrators have done a wonderful job. People who love audiobooks will really love The Photo Thief. Absolutely. Yes, I listened to that one on audiobook as well. And it was great. It was chilling in all the right ways and capturing in all the right ways as well. It was such a good one. Uh, just as a quick reminder, Amber, I'm sorry, I keep having to give reminders before I get to you. Um, but yes, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and either the authors will answer them directly in the chat or if we have time in the end, I will ask the authors um, your question. So feel free to go off in the chat. And Amber, um, tell us about the audience that you think your book targets. Well, it's interesting. If you had asked me that before the book came out, I would have said, well, probably people who really love The Secret Garden and 
because this is the only adult retailing the secret garden that I was able to find when I started trying to, you know, do a search for that. But honestly, and I think that is the case. I have had a lot of the reviews that I've gotten, people who were like, this was my book when I was growing up. I've had so many positive comments being like, oh my gosh, it was just so on point. But I've also been surprised since it's come out how many of the reviews are from people who said, I wasn't familiar with the, the original story, but after reading The Secret Garden of Yanagian, I want to go back and read the original story. And that has just made my heart happy. <laughs> so I think that, so it doesn't require you to be familiar with the original to in order to enjoy it. And I also would have said that I thought it would be more aimed towards a female audience because it does have an essentially an all female cast in my version of The Secret Garden. And, but I have had several men, in fact, I had somebody come up to me not that long ago and said, I love that this is an all female cast. I love that. So that was really nice to hear. And then the final little piece I would say, is people who love Japan. I was actually talking at a um, Japan America Society meeting um, two weeks ago, and, and I was talking about my book, and so many people came up to me afterwards, and they're like, it made me feel like I was in Japan. It reminded me of the time that I spent there. And so if you love Japan, if you've been, or you've always wanted to go, this gives you a little slice of what it's like to be in Japan with the food and the smells and the flowers and all that, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's very neat. I read The Secret Garden probably, you know, years and years and years ago and couldn't tell you a single thing about the story now, but I absolutely agree. It's not something that you really need to have a strong knowledge of in order to appreciate The Secret Garden of Yanagi Inn. So I love that people have been giving you that feedback. Um, so you guys had mentioned earlier that you guys have some really strong themes in your book. And uh, I'm wondering what you guys think will be the main impact of your story. What message do you think your story will be getting across to your audience? I'm really looking forward to seeing when it comes out what people say, because I've gotten um, such interesting responses from early readers, beta readers. Even my copy editor sent me an email about how um, uh, she had lost someone to addiction and how that was the theme that resonated most with her. And I hadn't even considered that. Um, I've had people who just loved the acting aspect and the stage aspect and really connected with that. Um, mostly, I think, I think by a certain age, everyone has lost someone who really sticks in their soul. And so I feel like there are themes in that that anyone will be able to connect with. There is one scene in the book that I still cry when I read it, and I've read it about 237 times um, with editing and revising and all of that, but um, it still, and it still, um, I, I want people to have a sense of like peace and maybe it's a different interpretation of what happens when someone you love goes away. But I also want people to have fun while they're reading it. And I have really enjoyed, like sometimes I get text message screenshots or email screenshots from people of their like favorite lines and stuff. And that's, that's amazing. Um, mostly I'm hoping that people will, have, will feel like they've been somewhere else for a while and have enjoyed the time there. Yeah, that's, I can see that people definitely would have that feedback for you based on just the pieces that I've been able to read and, and fully be engulfed by. So I, again, really just love all the feedback that all of you are getting because it feels like I had just such a similar experience in reading your books. Um, Jen, how, what do you think the main impact of your story will be on your audience? Well, um what I want it to be and what I've seen so far, because the book came out in October, and I'm pleased to say that that what I wanted was I wanted people to argue, <laughs> and like in book clubs and on forums about, is Cassie talking to ghosts? Is she mentally ill? Is it her seizure disorder? You know, I want I left it up to the reader to decide if this is a ghost story. And um, I've been very pleased at, at 
at the range of responses to that I've gotten there. Some people were all in, yep, yep, this is all paranormal, this is a ghost story. And people who are like, nope, you are clearly um, trying to make the reader empathetic to mental illness. So um, it's been interesting to see that discussion. Um, there is, uh, even going back to the great grandfather, Cassie's great grandfather, Leland, who is a character in this book in his 90s, and he's a World War II veteran. So he's clearly got post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, there's a sort of a theme of what we call generational trauma. So so there's, there's this empathy towards people who have um, mental illness. And the decision, just like Brennan, our hero, has to make, he has to decide what is going on here, and the reader has to decide too. And it's just been fun to hear the different responses from the reader. I'm sure, yeah. And because your book has been out since October, you've probably gotten many responses already on how it's impacted people. So that is very cool. And Amber, what do you think uh, will be the main takeaway for, for your audience, for your book? Um, well, similar to what Jen was saying, I've gotten a lot of really lovely feedback. I've actually been able to attend in person two different book clubs for people who were reading my book, and which was an amazing experience, I have to say. And I think the main takeaway that people have been getting, and what I hope people would be getting, was that there's there's a lot of layers to it. I've So many of the reviews, like if you look on Goodreads or what have you, people are saying, I walked into this thinking it would only be like this kind of creepy, you know, Japanese ghost story kind of thing. They say, but I didn't expect how it would make me cry. I didn't expect that I would walk away with this sense of peace and well-being that I did at the end. So they're like, this was so much deeper than I was thinking it would be when I walked into it. And that, of course, I mean, as an author, that's, you know, like the best thing that you can hear. Um, because like the, like the original Secret Garden, it really is ultimately a story about growth and recovery and healing. So even though it does have some pretty creepy parts and it's got some very sad parts, ultimately I do want people when they put down the book to be like, oh, that felt like a warm cup of tea. <laughs> so I love that, that's great. Well, we have a few more minutes before uh, we are going to sign off. So I'm going to kind of spring a surprise question on you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about your protagonist and about the main conflict and overarching uh, themes of your book. But now I want you to tell us about your bad guys, your antagonists. Um, just give us a little idea of what we're getting into here, Meredith. <laughs> well, my main antagonist is this ghost called the Jamani, and he he gets off on causing strife. He gets off on causing pain, and he's a very powerful ghost. So he is able to move things. He's able to throw things on top of my <laughs> protagonist. He's able to. Uh, float things, levitate things, he's, and he's able to, to, to break through her wards, anything that she does or tries to do. Um, every time he, he attacks, it gets worse. He gets creepier. He's like this dark figure in a, in a black trench coat and a black fedora and like with this like skeletal looking grin and speaks in this raspy kind of voice. And every time he, every time he finds uh, Rayleigh and Casper, it just gets worse and worse. Um, so he, he is the bad guy and they kind of have to figure out like how he became this kind of ghost as ghosts all start out one way and they can change the longer they are ghosts in this world, at least. So they have to figure out what he is and how they can stop him. And it gets harder and harder as they go. Ooh, very interesting. Jen, tell us about your antagonist. So like most um, sort of traditional murder mysteries, again, if you think of like an Agatha Christie or if you think of the movie um, Knives Out that was out a few years ago, um, there's a cast of potential villains in, in my book. <laughs> so at least four that I can think of off the top of my head. And I set up Cassie's father as really being the, the bad guy. He's a rich doctor, um, just more concerned about social appearances than anything else. And so at, at face, he is the villain. 
But um, one of Cassie's ghost friends, um, Ruth, is not so nice either. And, you know, there's even a question about good old Leland Dolan, the great grandfather, World War II hero veteran who may not be exactly what he seems. Um, Brennan's boss, the police chief. There's just all kinds of villainry going on <laughs> throughout this book. A lot of bad guys. And once again, you know, the layers unfold and the reader has to decide, you know, who's who's really the worst of the worst here. Well, we all love a good whodunit. <laughs> and I know, Amber, you had said that yours is a little bit more of a quiet mystery, you called it, just because there's no active murder in um, in your book. But, you know, as every good story does, I'm sure yours has a little bit of a, a bad guy character. So tell us about yours. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody asked what is the main antagonistic force in the story, I would definitely have to say that it was Mari herself. But there is definitely a kind of a bad guy figure who had a lot of fun writing. Um, her name is Ogura, and she's kind of like the housekeeper at the inn. And even though at the end you kind of find out why she's been kind of been this obstacle to Mari, the she does get to be this kind of force that just creeps Mari out and blocks her at every turn. And it's funny, I had somebody come up to me after I did a, a talk and they said, oh my gosh, you remind me so much of like Mrs. Danvers, like from Rebecca. And I said, yeah, you kind of need, because The Secret Garden Yanagi Inn is kind of pitched as a, a modern Gothic retelling of The Secret Garden. So to get that little bit of Gothic, you kind of have to have the, the female character who's older and who's really trying to obstruct the main character for reasons maybe they don't quite understand. And so she was so much fun to write. But I love that I got to make her a, a pretty round character, though, too. We get these little hints of her humanity. And like I said, at the end, you kind of figure out why she's been doing what she's been doing. But yeah, it was a lot of fun to write somebody. It was like, okay, well, Mari's going to try to do this. Okay, how is Ogura going to try to block that? <laughs> why is it so much fun to write the bad guys? <laughs> oh, there's whole talks on that. We could riff on that forever. <laughs> when a jerk shows up, it's so much fun on the page. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do have to say, I love both of you guys' books. I've read them both. Oh, thank you so much. It's nice of you to say, Meredith. <laughs> yeah, fun for the reader, too. And I also very much enjoyed all three of your books. And Meredith, I've because it hasn't come out yet, I've seen bits and pieces. So I've loved everything that I've seen. Um, and that is the end of our chat once again um, we had on meredith lyons author of ghost humor jail delosier author of the photo thief and amber a logan author of the secret garden of yanagi Inn. thank you all so much for joining us for this haunting read spoof chat my name is jess this is uh cam cat books and i will see you guys at the next panel enjoy your library journals day of dialogue <laughs>